to enjoy your life. Fuck what ain't going right by y'all. Fuck what ain't going like how y'all think life should go. Fuck it. Live it. Guess what? Because it might not be going right today, but tomorrow it's going to be going perfectly fine. Yep. So enjoy yourself. Yeah. Live life. Don't let life live you. God don't make mistakes. Mistakes just don't happen. Everything happens. Janae, happen right on time. Me. I promise. <laughs> Janae, I love you. You better see it. When I get rich, you're going to see how much I love you, okay? What? Like, the fuck? I'm just saying. You don't got no. Look. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It don't take much for us. Love yeah. you, Ray. Hey, love y'all. New here at 6, the family of a young woman who was found dead inside a hotel freezer six years ago will receive a $6 million wrongful death settlement. That deal was reached in August, but the terms were not made public until today. Security video showed 19-year-old Kanika Jenkins as she appears to stumble around the Crown Plaza O'Hare Hotel in September of 2017 after attending a party there. She's seen wandering toward a walk-in freezer, but her body was not found until the following day. Jenkins' mother sued for negligence, claiming if the hotel had monitored the cameras, they could have saved her daughter. These people have the same gear on. Everybody in here has the same gear on that they had on with the reenactment. Same gear. Now I've been telling y'all the whole entire time they had these people, pulled them to the side, told them what they role was going to be in the videos. They edited the videos, all that. Watch. This is backstage. Yeah, we got you, Mr. Cockeye. We got you. And you know this is the night of the reenactment, y'all. Because they got the same clothes on. They in here, these directors in here telling them we want you to do this and do that and do this. Do you feel me? Time heals, time reveals. Get in the car, let me know. Boom! I'm right there. Shout out to Unk Fed. Oh yeah, we're gonna find out who he is too. Mm. We're gonna let that ride. We check this out. We got a big girl from over up by the bathroom door went out. She didn't come with Tyrone and them all up together well. Bump out. Doing what? Mm-hmm. They two ain't coming to party together. I'll call it to the good yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, said just our father. Nah, there she go. Some of y'all, they had these people in groups, had them in groups. They were doing wardrobe changes. They had directors in there. I'm starting to think now, everybody we saw in that hotel during that segment, everybody you saw walking through the halls was paid to walk through the halls. And had to do a gag order contract. It's crazy, man. Uh I just want one cup. Two cups. That shit's trying to hot. Ain't on that. Ain't on that. Ain't on that. Ain't Twenty-six. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you know, you can go out to see. 
Yeah, you too, sure. What y'all been doing? Four o'clock in the morning. Um, when her friends was asking uh, earlier today, like about four o'clock in the morning, uh, could they run the video cameras? They said that they didn't have no cameras. But now I came and it was a lady. She said that it, she she heard music, and she she asked me that I want to go upstairs. And we went upstairs on the 11th floor, and it was someone came to the room, and the, she said that she did see my daughter there with a group of girls and and, and a couple of guys. But um, that's all she just saw because she was trying busy trying to get reception on her phone. All right. Well then, um, you know what, um. Are you sure you don't mean the Crown Plaza in Rosemont? Yes, the Crown. Yes, it is. I'm sorry, the Crown Plaza in Rosemont. That's exactly where it's at. I'm okay, so and sorry. No, no, it's okay. And and have you spoke? And you said you spoke with the uh... front desk. I'm sitting outside, right in front of the hotel, in a parking lot right now. And they were saying that they didn't, that they haven't seen your daughter since she left, or no? This is a different set. This is a different um uh, a new. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a new shift. And they said that they haven't seen it. Well, of course, they wouldn't have seen it because this is like 3 or 4 in the morning. And I just seen that they, she was here because I just found the ticket where where they entered this um, hotel. It was at um, 1.36 p.m. So hold on. This is not her ticket because this was on the 6th. My daughter wasn't here on the 6th. 601? Uh, the same party from the Crown Plaza just called back saying they need to see you guys. They potentially know what room she's in now. One, all right, uh, 10 4. 101. Six, nine, nine. That way I'm happy every time I get the signature, so I have that way when I'm done. Yeah, uh, 10 4, 101, 6 or 9 or no. They said that they believe that she's on the 11th floor through the window that they were looking at. All right, 10-4. one one six one nine. I opened up that original missing persons call, so we'll be going to that now.
Central. I believe it's one down from the top. We're trying to figure out. We think it's four, uh, four thirteen. Central. Six 
Echo one, one, one. Go ahead. Still by the cafeteria or says she's looking for answers and so far she's not satisfied with what she's hearing about how her 19 year old daughter Kanika Jenkins may have died. Hotel employees found her body in a freezer in the basement. Jenkins had been at a birthday party Friday night on the ninth floor at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Friends admit they were patient. Hey, thank you. Andrew, what's the facts? Well, first and foremost, thank all of you all for uh, joining in and thank you other activists out there for being on the front line too and everybody out there with the protests and everybody out there with the prayers. But the video show the young lady in the lobby and I watched her from the lobby walk to the elevator. Now, whether something, and I'm saying this because the toxicology hasn't come out yet. We know she consumed some alcohol and was a little bit impaired. But at the same time, if someone had put some in her drink, the toxicology, toxicology would show. So that's very important and we're waiting for that. But she did walk into that elevator and she was trying to possibly get back up to the ninth floor, but she might have pushed the button or the button was always pushed already to show lower level and the elevator went down. Okay. So she got off the elevator I can see where she was staggering, as they said, and she got off. She went to the stairwell casing. The stairwell leads back upstairs. So she was by herself she throughout was by this. by herself throughout this whole complete ordeal. I watched and looked for cameras everywhere. I, they showed me cameras everywhere. She walked to the steps. She did a little stumble trying to get up there, but she turned around and went back the other way. Now, she was still walking kind of wobbly. She did. Uh, for, fall into the wall and she started opening up doors. So she opened up one door, she went in, came right back out. She wasn't in there. You can tell she was looking for doors, trying to get back upstairs to the lobby. So she went from door to door, she went in this door, she didn't stay long, she went in there and came back out. She was basically trying to find her way back to the lobby. As she continued down the path, and she Leave. went to the to the bathroom and everything. Yeah, she went, What's yeah, some she, of the doors she did go in? One of the doors she she went in was the men's washroom. She that door pushed open, came she came right back out. She pushed in, came right back out. She went inside another door. She came right back out. She was checking doors to see to me how she can get back upstairs. So she went down toward this unsecured area that she went, and the camera shows it, and it shows where she went when she went in. The doors weren't secure. She went right in. There was a freezer part there where you all see, uh, where you all haven't seen it yet, where she had walked back. There was no one in there. The place, they don't even use that part no more. It's a kitchen part, and it has two, two, two large freezers. So she, she walked back there, and then she went inside that door. She opened it up, which you can open up. It's just like a big steel door. It don't take much to open it. You open up that door, you take one half a step to your right is another door to another freezer part. She had to open up that door to go inside of there, mainly trying to find her way back to the lobby. In saying that, if she was she was so impaired, so we don't know what's in the toxicology, but the door closed and the other door closed and it's dark inside of that, that little freezer room. So she probably got scared, tried to find her way to push that door out, but it was a safety knob there that you can touch like this, and that door will open. 
And I was in there with the detectives. I was in that freezer. And I was scared even being in that freezer, even in there with them, and I was in there by myself. I can understand the part where she was at with the motion camera up there, that when, it, when somebody walks, it turns that way. Where she was, you cannot go no farther. That's it. You cannot hide back there. You can't go no farther. If anybody was back there, they would have came up. They had to come out that way she came. Now, that's the negligence on that motel establishment there that that place was closed down and nobody shouldn't have been back there. Now, it's very easy for you to get in there and that door to close and in that freezer, lights out, it's air sh shut tight. If you had a room in that motel, you had a child, a son, your son and daughter get on that elevator and all of a sudden start wanting around and pushing doors, your baby would have went in there. That door would have closed on your baby. You'd have been looking for your child. It's an accident that was waiting to happen and it lies within that motel unit there who owns that motel, they should have secured that area. If locks was on the door like they was on the door when I got there, they had locks on there. So I couldn't get in, but didn't have no locks on there when she was there. If they had them, she probably would have turned around like she turned around at the other doors to find her way back upstairs. And I, sad as I hate to say, we got to find out what's their, in their, their toxicology and whatever's in there was in her system. Then it needs to come out. Then if it's something illegal, the focus goes back to the room and the people that was inside the room. If they know something, they need to say something. That's somebody's child. That's somebody's baby. And that unit freezer that she was found in. Is, so why no, was, was no, the freezer on? No, the, to me, the freezer wasn't on. To me, when they were saying that uh, uh, it looked like she was wet or something, it's hot as hell in that freezer. So she is she going to sweat. The body going to sweat. I'm quite sure if uh, the freezer was on, then that's a different story that has to be proven. But at the same time, there was nobody in that hallway. Nobody walked her down that hallway. Nobody forced that baby down that hallway. She was mainly, all I see is trying to find her way to get back upstairs where she was. So, you know, the, the, the Facebook people are putting the nonsense stuff on there, even about the $200. You know, it's been clarified even with the young ladies, and I respect them that they came in and talked to them detectives. It was all about the $200 for the parking space. If you don't retain your ticket and lose your ticket, you got to pay $200 maximum fee for to get your car up out of there and that's what they was talking and saying in that room you know and everybody's trying to point the finger here point the finger there only point the finger if you know the true facts and go talk to the detectives because the mother don't want to hear all of that she's hurt think about if that was your child in this little box room and got in there and you trying to find her now on another part you got security there their negligence because if that's the last place you seen that baby, and I call her a baby because that's somebody's child, if that's the last place you seen her on video surveillance, that should have been the first place she was looking to secure in that area. Now, if you had her, maybe she would have been saved and been still living. If you say, okay, we got her in this area here, and this is where she's going, you run and send somebody down there quick and, quick and fast if you watching the video footage. Because you got to, if they was an intruder in there and you on your job, then you got to get somebody down there. Somebody should have been at the computer watching the monitor. Now, who fell asleep? Because when you seen her. In following this case since the start, we are one of the families seen on the video. We did not have any clue that we were on the surveillance nor told. This is why, and our part in this, we are at the Crown Plaza of Chicago's. September 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, checking out September 9th at 11 a.m. We were supposed to stay September 5th, but we missed our flight. However, the hotel still charged us for the room as we were too late to cancel. So this is why you see that charge on the bill. We were ticked off by that. We had gone to the cafeteria. I realized I left my jacket in there. I went back downstairs to see if it was open. It was not. So I went to the front desk to let them know about my coat. I left and get more room keys. There were a lot of kids hanging around. They looked thug-like. They looked rough and they did not make me feel comfortable. I went to the front desk to inquire about my jacket and noticed staff had changed their shift. There was, a, there was security in the lobby in a few areas, as well as some businessmen, but not, did not think much about it. 
but saw some rough young adults in the lobby as we walked to the elevator some behind us. As my family and I got into the elevator, the kids stopped and did not continue towards the elevator but walked back towards the lobby. I was glad as they made me feel nervous. We wanted to go swimming, however, when we arrived the door was locked. When I was at the door, I could see kids, businessmen, all in street clothes. The young, rough looking. My kids were disappointed, so I went to the front desk to ask why it's closed, yet people in there. They told me they were having a private party. Here y'all. All the females nowadays wear so We wear so Kanika hair was wet. She had straight hair. Her hair was flat and straight. You can flat iron this body wave hair straight. But once it get wet, that's exactly how it's going to look. Her eyelashes, the way they were when her eyes were closed, they were wet. And then I just recently started thinking um, the other day, the pool may have actually been the actual crime scene. The pool, y'all. Listen to this. Shinny, you said she probably died in a pool? Listen to this, though, y'all. This I, is I, crazy. I, I just started thinking about it the other day because yeah, you know how I am. When something gets into my head, I can't let it go. I got to figure out why. Why her hair was so wet? The rest of her body wasn't, you know? Why was her hair and eyelashes so wet? You know, the security guard gave cleaning out the pool for feces as the reason why he didn't help her friends look for her. That he, he got an emergency feces. call to clean the pool for feces. Cleaning the pool at, at 4. four in the morning, Zach. 4 a.m. at that time. So it wasn't an emergency. If that pool, if it had feces in it, it had feces in it before that pool closed today, that night before. So unless them feces was in there from the night before, or well, whose feces were they? Why were was they he cleaning? I was just about to say that. Whose feces was it? What, what kind of feces? Were they brown or were they gray? <laughs> well, I don't know if the color matter, but... but no, 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 no. She's no, no. actually in her room. It's no, a this, mirror on her wall. Like this. If they come out green, it's from liquor. It's from, it's from alcohol. If it's brown, it's from chocolate, bread, or oats, or from oatmeal. So uh, uh, according to, like, if she was drinking hard looking you could tell it's green. Like, it's, it's just a lot of, like, things you can tell. Right, and so that's why it would have been important <clears throat> for that food, that food to be investigated and researched. You know what I'm saying? The pool, if you look at all the reports, that pool was shut down for three or four days for deep cleaning after this. Right. I believe that's where exactly. all our evidence was. She was, wow. just, she was just placed in the freezer. She was placed in the freezer on purpose because this is a perfect place to place her because it's a, going to be a lack of evidence in here because the crime didn't actually happen in here. Wow, that's deep. So, that, that explains why her hair is wet. <clears throat> Hey, you got time and that's why it. I want to know, do that oh. pool got cameras, or did those cameras stop from being hey. working by the pool hey. as well, just like the ones by the kitchen? I did not give it any more thought, and our family just went to our room, ordered room service, watched a movie, and settled for the night. We went about our day, leaving the hotel September 7th to do tours and shopping, enjoying our day. When I entered the room, my coat was hanging in a bag on the hook. Also left was a nice fruit basket and chocolates with an apology the pool being closed. We thought that nice. September 8th, as we entered the lobby, one of the staff came to me and said that the kitchen was closed, but were told that they would have light snacks in the cafeteria area between 3 and 5 p.m. When we went there, all they had was pizza, cold drinks, water, coffee, and a thermos. Others who stayed at the hotel were there too. We talked, and they were not happy about the service. Late that night, the toilet would not flush, and now constantly running and disturbing our sleep. I called the front desk a few times with no answer. I got very upset, as they were not answering to go downstairs. It was late, around 1 a.m. When I went down, all I saw was police standing around. My immediate reaction was something happened. As I began to walk towards the front desk, a police officer stopped me. He asked me what I wanted. I thought this odd to ask and told him how I needed maintenance to come to my room due to the running toilet. He laughed and said, just put a pillow over your head. 
As I started to walk forward, he placed his arms on my chest and said, Stop right there. I said, Why are you placing your hands on me? He said, Sorry, I cannot let you go further. I said, Why? What's going on? He said, Nothing at all. Just return to your room. That is when, that is what I am telling you to do and forget what's going on here. I felt something was going on the on the right to know. I went up I went back upstairs furious. My wife asked me as I was now so irritated making noise to wake her. I told her. Then she got very angry. She dialed the front desk, a lady answered and I could hear my wife speaking to her. Why are you not allowing my husband to go to the front desk? We need maintenance. She apologized and said no one can come to the lobby at this moment. My, wa my wife asked, is something going on at the hotel? She dialed the front desk, a lady answered, and I could hear my wife speaking to her. Why are you not allowing my husband to go to the front desk? We need maintenance. She apologized and said no one can come to the lobby at this moment. My, wa my wife asked, is something going on at the hotel? I could hear no and her continuing to talk to my wife, but not hear the conversation. My wife got off naturally. I was anxious to hear what she told my wife. My wife said they were making a film downstairs and sorry that we were being inconvenienced, that if we could be patient until morning, they could have a manager call us. I found it very odd that we were never told they would be filming in the hotel. I could not sleep. I had to see for myself. When I got to the elevator, it would not allow me to go to lower lobby or lobby, only the floor above. I got off and walked downstairs to see the lobby. I didn't see any big film productions, mostly cell phones out, but many kids in the lobby hanging around, walking around, older folks with luggage just hanging around. As I began to walk towards the front desk, a security guard ran towards me and told me to go back to my room. I asked if there was a problem. He said, it's okay, please go now. I asked if those kids were causing a problem. He said, no, it's okay. We just don't want to have any others in the area. I couldn't do much about it, but go back upstairs. I told my wife and she said she was not happy with the service and wanted to check out. I agreed as we were here for holiday and did this, and did this hotel was just not for us. The next day, September 9th, my family checked out. While waiting, I chatted up with a guy who I'd seen in the cafeteria to say hello, who asked me, do you find something odd about this hotel? I found that a strange question to answer. We did not like, the, like it due to lack of service and rudeness by staff. The pool closing disappointing our kids. His reply was, there was something more going on here. I seen cops. He mentioned, well, you do know that they have organ, an organ place next door. Them cases I seen some folks look like carriers. Maybe they're snatching organs there. And he laughed out loud. I was stunned and just stared and said nothing more to him. Felt more uncomfortable and just wanted to check out and get it done and get the hell out of there. When we checked out, they gave us a coupon to stay one night free at the Holiday Inn. We then went to another hotel and enjoyed the rest of our holiday. I wrote a review about my complaint on their website, but they never approved it. A few months later, my son said, I saw your family on a video on your holiday about the death of the girl where you stayed. My son asked what he was talking about, and his friend said, it is a big case going on at the hotel you all stayed at that got him into, as they say, it was a murder to watch YouTube videos and go to their website and their whole file on it. So we began to review things. I got the link that he was talking about and told me about it and we watched and saw our family in the police video. 
him and us in the video. I watched but did not understand what was going on. I showed my wife, now freaking out. We both panicked and began to look at each other information about this. In the video, I recognized many. The security guard, the blonde lady, a few businessmen I had seen, and some of those thug-looking kids. When I viewed the drunk girl in the hallway, my heart sank. When I viewed the kitchen she walked through, I ran into the bathroom and threw up. Threw up. I was very confused. We heard nothing about this while staying there. Why are all we in the surveillance when we had already left the hotel? All I kept on doing was relaying back what I saw in my head. My wife, son, and myself had many sleepless nights, writing what we could recall down, going over video surveillance to try to figure out those key memories. Although I did not want to get my kids involved, they often walked around the hotel, went to the pool restaurant to watch the videos to see if they seen anything, people, etc. In viewing, we found two portions of our family in their surveillance walking the halls. My wife then noticed the date on the video was not the date we stayed there of us being seen. In the surveillance, the date said the 9th. We had checked out already. We looked at each other and said, WTF, how is that possible? We combed through many YouTube videos. Oddly, some were saying how they were edited, timestamps included. Included. But why? My wife was scared we were now on video. Would the police call us? We did not know what to do. Naturally, I called the hotel to speak to the manager. The Rosemount Police, I left numerous voicemail messages with them. No call returned to the state. In the meantime, I continued sleepless nights coning coning through these files that were police reports, watching more video surveillance hours on end to see if more footage of my family was on it. I only saw the two clips so far of all of us, but recognized some of those people in the lobby and front desk. I recognized the blonde lady in the surveillance, the security guard, but the people at the front desk I'd never seen before except for September 8th and were not the same when we went in on September 6th nor checked out. We could only think perhaps they changed shift. This was very stressful for all of us. No one is responding to any of our emails or calls. In speaking to a lawyer, they said as long as our faces are blurred, it does not invade our privacy. They were blurred somewhat, but heck, I can tell. But showing this to friends, they could see, they could tell it was us. The lawyer said we have no legal grounds to do anything. We are thankful that nothing occurred to us so far today, personally from us being in the surveillance, but every day we wonder if we are going to get a call or email asking us about it, as we really do not know how many people have watched their videos. I cannot understand why the time and dates are wrong. This perturbs us, as we are not all crazy to know that we were not there on September 9th. We had left and at a hotel far away. Okay, Jane, okay. It's your boy Straight Drive. I got time, y'all yeah. already know. Well, guess what? Gray. Yeah. I see you. Oh, you big head on Gray. Gray Hill, Gray Hill, Gray Hill, Gray Hill, Gray Hill, Gray Hill. She dead walking in freezer. Yo, time clock off. Gray Hill, Gray Hill, Gray Hill, Gray Hill, Gray Hill. This is just for the Nika. No time for the game, dude. And your time clock off too. Was it 2.30, 3.30? Security, 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 security. He got blood on his hands, dude. This ain't black versus white. This is about what is right. I got time, got time, got time, got time, got time. Now the ten straight drop is right. Mike Larry with a strike. So the king ain't right. T Knight with a fight. Man in the bank might be the only one right. Was it murder or mystery? Was she 5.9, 5.6? Was she 1.30 or 1.50? Drop is a mystery. Was she 19 or 21? Was it a GD or BD? Re Re Irene Monifa, Haitian Maya, Chicago Police, Crown Plaza, Sorry, Teresa, 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 Teresa. Gray who, gray who, gray who, gray who, gray who, gray who. She did walk in the freezer. Your time clock off, your clock off. Gray who, gray who, gray who, gray who, gray who.
Gray new, gray new, gray new, gray new. Ooh, the devil's with the nigga. Okay. No time for the game, dude. Got time, but no time. Y'all already know, man. Hashtag J4K. Hashtag. Y'all keep rapping. We won't give up. We give up. They win. And guess what? They win a great hue. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I see you. I see you. Great hue. Great hue. Great hue. Great hue. Great hue. Great hue. You didn't walk in the freezer. Yo, turn clock off, dude. Great hue. Great hue. Great hue. Great hue. Great hue. Great hue. This is just for Kanika. No time for the game, dude. That I found that door, but I couldn't get in that door over there because it's locked. Wait, go back. You see how they got that like black that. curtain? Look, I, I told you. Here. I told you. Yeah, that's what I told you. That's, that's what the they showing us. The white doors that's right there. Mom, I know. I'm talking about. Look they, at these white doors. Yeah, back off. That's where it's at. Go look right there. Right there. That right. is. That's the doors. That's the door we went in. But they ain't showing us that door. They, that's the lower level. I mean, the, uh, that's not the lower the, level. That's the level. Because there's another level down. Uh, but that's the level up, right? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. That's, that's the, 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 I'm that's telling it. you, them the white doors. I yeah, remember that. Yeah, that's it. Them the white doors. I went through that door. Watch, you're going to see right now. I went through there. There's nothing there. And look, now they got some right there covered. Mm -hmm. What's that, black? Look. You could go through there? Yeah, yeah I went through there. Door. I'm telling you, I know them I the went doors. through there. There's the nothing there. Watch. There's. I went it was into this room. over there. There's, uh-uh. They sent you to. Come on. Hurry up. <laughs> See, I went in here, look. Okay. And there, there, there's a guy. Even a guy looked at me, and he didn't even see nothing. He didn't say anything. So you're in the kitchen. Uh huh. Is this what? This is all the kitchen. That's it. No freezers or nothing in here. See? Oh, they took all the freezers out. There's nothing in there of any Wait, type of the freezer. Wait, the freezer look mobile? And this is the back door. This is it's stainless steel. It's you a mobile freezer. See, now I'm no, coming back no, out. No, it's not mobile. It's not mobile. No, okay. it's not. So now I'm coming back out, and I'm going to go back to the other.